Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Karen. I'm a lefty who loves fountain pens, writing, journaling, hobonichi, and all of that good stuff. So if you enjoy those kinds of content, hope you can like this video and subscribe. And in today's video, I will be sharing, I guess, the second part of my planner journey. And in this video, I will be sharing with you two journals that I've kept for the most part. And these are all like term A5 size hardbound journals. So the first one is this typical uh, dot grid book. And I was able to uh, use the stickers that it, uh, that it came in. So if you get like term journals, they have stickers at the back. You just look at the pouch in the back part of the journal. And the second book is actually the bullet journal uh, collaboration with Leuchtturm and of course I've had my initials engraved here. So if you notice this one is the first one this is my maiden name and then the second bullet journal already has my married name. So let's do a quick flip through of this journal. So when I started doing bullet journaling, I wasn't very religious when it came to just following all of the facets that Ryder Carroll was implementing. So for me, whatever worked for me, I kept it. I tweaked things a bit based on how I was planning previously. But basically, I was just following the weekly you know, layout of the Starbucks planners. And then I decided to you know, dive deep into how my planning setup really was just have here the title page where I have my information here and then on the left part here I just have some uh, post-its you know you'll, you'll never know when you need post-its so the index I didn't really put much use um, out of it it just had my 2017 calendar which was the year I started to try bullet journaling and then um, I also got married um, that year and we planned our honeymoon the year after and then yeah I didn't really do much <laughs> of a good job here in the index so for me I started creating my own calendar here and of course I had habit trackers so for the month of January I was conscious enough to color code and then these are all the things that I wanted to track um, the numbers here are the number of coffee cups and teacups that I had. And then, I don't know, I, I just blanked out, I guess, on the third, third week of January. So for me, bullet journaling, I guess it was a hit or miss. I really did enjoy setting up my spreads, but I wasn't very um, religious when it came to putting in a lot of information. <laughs> What I had here was a weekly spread, but I had three work streams. So the first work stream was a project that I was doing. The second one was wedding planning. And then the third one was um, personal appointments, activities, and all. So it was this one is a good spread because it lets you see the days of the week. And then you can see which days are kind of heavy, which ones are a bit blank. So maybe if you can try to spread it out, then you will have an overview of, you know, the different facets um, that you're working on. And then this part here, I just had, I just had to list down my credit card purchases. Um, since this was a January tracker i had to list down all of my purchases in december just make sure that when i pay the bills on january it had the right you know records i also tried to do a bills payment tracker um wherein the y-axis was the amount and the x-axis was the months i wanted to track my consumption for utilities like for power for internet for water cable but basically it didn't obviously plan out <laughs> um start of the year i had a list of all the movies that i wanted to watch and if i've completed them i just um shade the box beside it so obviously i wasn't able to update this much 
I also tried a mood tracker, but I was only religious on January, February, and then for the most part, um, July, August, and September. I, yeah, <laughs> that's the reality of um, this one. As is another weekly spread uh, with a different layout. So I tried using the horizontal layouts, but I think the earlier approach was better for me especially as i was juggling um three things uh, maybe you can do that also with your hobbies with work and personal maybe those three work streams you can try and see how it works out for that kind of layout and then this is the monthly spread which is kind of it was kind of, it took an effort to build this up because I had to count the squares. They had to be equal um, sizes and I just had to make sure everybody had, you know, the right boxes in it. And then, okay, this was a layout that I saw on Pinterest. This is a wedding suppliers tracker. This tracked how much we paid for them. So this part here was um, our down payments and then eventually everything where everybody was fully paid of course and then i just had here our wedding requirements so the documentation what we need to do the seminars that we had to attend uh, everything we had to submit i also have here measurements of my bridesmaids so i was paying for their uh, dresses so i just had it here this is my year in a glance. I, this was actually a cool thing to create. And mostly these are all birthdays and holidays. Uh, but I didn't really have pretty much use for it since, you know, I was going by the week when it comes to planning and tracking. This was another horizontal layout. It wasn't really that helpful for me. It just reminded me of my Starbucks planners. And then for February, my habit tracker was looking much better <laughs> than January. Um, I was experimenting or testing out different inks by then. I wasn't into fountain pens yet, but I really love the gel um, colored pens that were... Uh, I think most of them are Japanese, but I think at this time, Sarasa was really my thing. And these are all done with Sarasa. This was the February uh, monthly spread. And then here is my weekly. I guess I gave up doing the work streams. Although in hindsight, I think the, the work streams might work for me better. But I guess everything was, you know, just merging into one. So I just had one list for everything. And that was it. <laughs> and then same for the following succeeding weeks. And then I had this wild tracker, which is called my skincare evening tracker, in which I had all of these steps. Of course, I didn't do them every day. So like, for example, exfoliating, you don't need to do it every single day, once, twice a week at most, depending on your skin type and then the types of, you know, <laughs> products that I used. I guess I was getting ready for my wedding and then uh, the next page here is just a meal tracker um, yeah and then of course a bit of exercise so I was already doing CrossFit back then and yeah I just wanted I wasn't going on a diet I just wanted to see how much I was eating on a day and yeah for me I didn't want to deprive myself too much And then, okay, this was just a continuation, but I, obviously I didn't fill it out. And then the next page was just a list of my CrossFit workouts and the times, of course, my results. But I, I was, much as I wanted to record everything, all of my CrossFit workouts, I wasn't doing a good job at it. <laughs> and then, okay, that's a bit of work. Um, yeah, and then March is also a monthly spread. I also expanded my tracker, which was a it was it's colorful. I hope I uh, I just wish I had completed them. Um, but yeah, so this is habits, and then this one was skincare. I wish I did a better job. 
And then, okay, for the wedding, these are the seat assignments. And an entourage, and then just some wedding preps. Okay, for this one, um, we were preparing for a multiple visa entry. Um, I think this is for Europe. And then, okay, this one were contact prints. So, we were trying to uh, pick out photos from our prenup um, going into the um, uh, slideshow, I guess. And then, yeah. We just, yeah. These were all number coded, so it was easier for us to choose uh, which photos to get. Okay, and then sometimes, yeah, I had some moments where i had to journal so yeah i journaled and the beauty of a bullet journal is that you're not bound by the contents of the planner or the notebook it's you who will set the the contents okay and then i planned a special solo trip for myself this was supposedly so instead of a despedida de soltera or like a bachelorette's party, I decided to go out and travel on my own uh, soul-searching journey, if you will, um, a few months before our wedding. I went to Japan and I went to Kyushu. So I was entering Fukuoka, I wanted to go around the island, and I planned my trip using my bullet journal. So it was a very, very nice experiential travel for me. I really did enjoy traveling on my own. Japan is a very safe country. Um, you don't need to learn the language, but of course, it's an advantage if you know how to speak Japanese. But there are a lot of apps already that can help you with communications. So this one, I was just trying to map out my travel and then the next page is actually you know a checklist of things that i need to do my hotels where i will be staying and then yeah just referencing since i was moving from one city to another i had to track if i've paid all of them if my check-in check-out dates were correct they were coinciding and i didn't skip any night that will leave me practically homeless and of course um cash so aside from just booking using credit card i had to make sure i had a lot of cash or just the right amount of cash for travel so these are all the things that i need to pay and then of course um i wanted to make the most out of my jr pass so i made sure that all my trips were exceeding the amount of the jr pass so it says here that i have 10,000 yen in savings and yeah, that's just being me. And then I have here a to-do list, print out reservations. Um, but I think now screenshots will do. So this spread was basically a chronicle, if you will, of how my day went. So I had here um, waking up at 5 a.m. and then what I did. In this particular day, I was on my way to Nagasaki. And yeah, I checked in and then this was the reserved seat ticket that I got. And then I guess this part here was just my journal. Um, I went to this place called um, Gunkanjima. It's a historical place and now they are offering like day tours for this one. And I really had a good time and because I'm on my own, I really didn't have a schedule. I didn't need to rush myself. Um, if I wanted to stay longer, I could do that. If I wanted to go someplace that's outside of the schedule, of the usual schedule, I can do that. And I won't bother anyone. And I guess that's the beauty of traveling solo. So this part here was just, you know, my how my entire trip went. So the beauty of a bullet journal is that because it's undated, you can spend more pages, I guess, on a particular day that means more to you or if you want to put a lot of things like putting in memorabilia. Oh, I have the real pass here. So 
And maybe that's why when I first transitioned outside of the bullet journal, going into the Hobonichi, the first item that I got from Hobonichi was actually a day free. And at that time, I didn't want to be bound by, you know, one page per day. Yeah. Because at this point in time, I was very much busy and involved with wedding preparations and all of that. I spent more time on my bullet journal. And this became my go-to for all the preparations for the wedding. Yeah, for me, it was a really good experience um, using the Hobonichi for... Yeah, preparation. So, fast track to July. I didn't have a June entry here and I was perfectly fine with it. There was no page wasted because there I wasn't able to, you know, create layouts for June. So, yeah, July was the next entry. So, for myself, um, I had here series to watch. So, at that time, Suits, Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, <laughs> Goblin, all of that. And then I have here my tracker. I have a blank week here, week and a half. So I need to, I mean, it's really rewarding once you see all of this filled out in a certain month, right? So I hope, you know, motivation is good, but you need to have that discipline to make it sustainable. And then again, I started with a vertical layout. Um, I put here steps if you can see it but yeah um, yeah I think I was doing pretty well with the July spreads and then here's the August one wow yeah you really need to have that discipline to keep up with your habit trackers so for August I didn't have anything except this monthly layout and maybe this went well for me and I didn't need to do weekly layouts and then moving into September vertical layouts and I think yeah and until until to this day I really prefer vertical layouts and then moving into October and you can see I'm getting less creative and more functional more and then speaking of planning this was the month that we planned our honeymoon. We looked at um, routes, tickets, um, things to do. We were planning our schedule, um, where to go, and of course, comparing prices for the fares, airfares. And then we watched a concert by Jose Marie Chan. And then I had here a one year in review. Um, and then for 2018, I just wrote the entire calendar. And then, yeah. <laughs> this was what I used mainly for planning our honeymoon trip. I made a quick map of the countries we were visiting. And then... Yeah, so my layout became like daily bullet points. Um, I didn't assign spaces to it i just let it flow freely and then our, my february layout looked like this it was very messy um it, it became sort of a scrapbook and this was what i was busy with the entire time and, haha i had a 100 day challenge i stopped at day four oh well and then this was my May spread. These are some pressed flowers that I got from our first wedding anniversary. This part here was when we were um, expecting our first baby. So I had milestones here. Um, the seminars that we went to, uh, I put notes here mainly because I know I will reach for this when it happens. And then yeah basically all of my notes so this portion of the bullet journal was all about pregnancy preparing for birth and all of that what to do and basically my next entry was already 2021 and this entry was actually about fountain pens and this was i know this is odinil <laughs> i had a yeah an accident so this part here was mostly journaling entries and it's just me trying to get a feel of fountain pens and maybe and i think at the earlier videos 
I had this um, shared with you guys. And yeah, this is actually what started my fountain pen journey. So actually, after this last um, entry here, I had already shifted to the Hobonichi Day Free and I only had some pages to spare and then I decided to, you know, just finish or end this chapter. This is my bullet journal. This one, I really enjoyed filling it out because it was a mix of planning and journaling and then my thoughts and it became a scrapbook. It became my go-to everyday notebook, basically journal. One thing that I wanted to note is that it's a bit heavy for an everyday carry. This is an A5 and it's hardbound so it gets heavy eventually. This one is a Leuchtturm with the bullet journal um, collaboration and that's why it has here all of the keys. So yeah, here is an index that I don't really use. And then these, this is a feature log. I tried to be creative. The gray lines are weekends. And I like that there's a space for feature log but um, okay, so I started September 2021. It coincided with my Hobonichi Day Free. So I tried this one out. I really like the Leuchtturm pages. And I like it for my Sarasa. My gel pens. More than my fountain pens. So, yeah. So I have here a tracker. It's monochrome. I'm just using one pen at, at this point in time. And this one I'm using, I was trying the Lamy Safari. And then this spread became a weekly uh, vertical spread. And then this one became journal entries, journal entries. And then this one, the Rolling Weekly, this is something that I've adopted into my weeks. I think that works out pretty well for me. Um, I like that all of my tasks in a month or in a week can be done here. And then just once you've accomplished it, just put an X mark. Okay, and then, yeah, for this part here, I'm trying inks, fountain pen inks on uh, this type of paper with Leuchtturm. Love it. I know you've seen this in my past videos. So, I love this portion. Yeah, and then more ink testing. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so I was basically, um, there's still some pages left. Maybe I can do this to practice or writing with inks, like at the back part. <laughs> yeah, so I still have this. Maybe I'll do some ink swatching and all of that. So basically, that's a run through of my bullet journal. It's very flexible in a way that, of course, there's a system involved, but you don't need to adapt a hundred percent of that whatever works for you you incorporate it and that's why this pink bullet journal has been successful for me even if let's say there were failed spreads failed layouts it worked to my needs back then uh, it was a mix of planning and journaling because at that time i was having you know having an emotional roller coaster with the wedding and all and i was also chronicling my time my travels you know, when I was single, um, my Japan trip, and towards the end, our honeymoon. So it was really this one. This book is a treasure trove of memories. And so yeah, that is it. If you have tried the bullet journal method, how has it worked for you? Have you shifted out of it? Are you still using it? Are you modifying it to suit your needs? Or are you strictly using the, in the entire framework or the process from Ryder Carroll? So please let me know in the comments down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!